Hey everyone, Steve back with another uh, Unity Asset Review. Um, <clears throat> today we are going to be looking at the Polygon Town Pack by Cintiq Studios. I know, I know, another Cintiq Studios. Uh, at the time of recording this, this asset retails for $49.99 USD, so $50. Bucks. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's just go over the... The criteria. I uh, remember this goes on a pass fail. I don't do number ratings. I just, to me, something either passes or or it does not. So for quality, just like with all Cinti Studios uh, assets, especially their Polygon series, um, it 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 passes quality. It's good quality. They cram a lot of fidelity into low poly work, and I like that. Uh, modularity and workability. Um, <laughs> so. I, I'm giving it a pass, but with caveats, and I'll sort of go into what those caveats are once we get into the actual um, uh, demo scene and the asset manifest scene. Uh, but it does pass, in my opinion. Uh, support and serviceability, Synteeth is always good about responding to their customers, so they definitely pass there. And then value. Uh, for 50 bucks, I think that this is worth the money. Uh, I think that it's it's a it's a quality product. Um, are there things? Are there some things that I would like to see a little bit different? Sure, but at the end of the day, I do think that it is that it's a quality product, that it's a good product, and that um, it's worth the fifty bucks. So, without further ado, let's hop right into the uh, demo scene here. This is their standard demo scene. Um, that they have just with the asset pack. Just like always, I just dump my character controller straight in and push play. Uh, so if you haven't seen how they do, how Cintiq does these in the past, the actual sidewalks to streets, um, I, I go over it a little bit in the uh, post-apocalyptic video, but... I don't think I gave them enough credit on this uh, in, in that video because they do a good job of these being modularized in a really smart way, and you'll uh, from from a level design standpoint, and you'll see that when we hop into the asset manifest scene. Uh, so there's a decent amount of shrubbery. There's these sorts of speed bump looking things that just again it's a little accent. It's a little accent to give it more life essentially. <laughs> Uh, street poles, a couple different variants like that and like that. Um, the fences here. Uh, the box trucks, I didn't open any of these, but these doors are like separate pieces, so you can animate them to open, and the back of the box trucks are enterable. Um, this gets into one of my criticisms about modularity, though. There are three different shop variants. And each one of the shop variants is a full static mesh. It's just one piece. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen them give us a modular solution. So these walls and ceilings and floors and stuff being modular, but that's not what we got. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get more into that when we go into the asset manifest scene. Um, so do this. This is a good spot to do this. So just like, like we can wall run. We can slice, and we can uh, mantle. So just works out of the box. So here's another one of those shops. This one is open, so we'll go in. All of this floor clutter, like all this stuff um, that, you know, is in here, these are all modular, but the shells of the shops, the actual foundation of the building, is all, unfortunately, one piece. There's three different variants of that. All the vehicles have interiors, which is nice. Um, this one's even a stick shift, if you can see right there. Uh, same thing with the buses. And these doors, as well, are uh, separate pieces, so they're animatable to a point where you can... Um, yeah, turn profiler on. Uh, they're animatable to a point where you can, uh, you know, animate them to open and close and stuff, and then you can actually enter into the bus itself. Um, all of these houses that do not have interiors that you can't see in through the windows, these are all single-faced. 
Um, so I'll show what that means when we go into editor mode. But um, they're also completely static. These are not modular. Um, this bus too, you can, you can see that there's an interior and this door is also animatable. It's separate, so it's animatable. Uh, these houses, again, these are all static. So here's the third shop variant, it's just a larger one, and this sort of gives you an idea of what it's like without all the stuff. If you think about this desk, if this desk weren't here, that's how this these shops would be. They're just empty, you can put whatever, whatever you want in them, but they're not, you can't build your own shop essentially. So. You have a cathedral. This cathedral is, if you remember when I did the um, apocalyptic asset pack, this cathedral is uh, the non-apocalyptic damaged version of that. Um, so there is an issue <clears throat> with the fences here. When I try to walk through here, it's not going to let me do it. And that's because of the collider that they have on specifically this one piece. And I'll, I'll show that in the editor mode as well. But I think that that particular, like that's sort of a lazy thing that they didn't quite think through, maybe. I'm not sure why they did that. But so you see how I can't walk through? It's just because of that collider. And I'll, I'll show it to you in the editor mode. So the church here as well is one static piece. It's not modular. You can't build your own churches. Except just like with the shops, <laughs> just like with the shops, um, the lectern, the podium, the pews, all this stuff in here, these are all individual pieces. So you can kind of configure the internals however you want. You just, it just, the church itself is just one piece. And I would have liked to have seen that be modular as well. Or at least have some variants of it, you know. Um... So you've got lots of clutter, lots of good clutter, lots of shrubbery clutter and like other internal, like inside and outside clutter. Um, but this house over here, this is why, this house is why I gave it, uh, why I passed it on modularity. Because this house, and this is going to be the same thing, I'm not going to be able to get through there, I have to jump over, oops, to jump over. Um, so you can see that there's internals in this one. So this house is completely modularized uh, the way that it should be. These are all individual pieces that you can build your own house with. Um, same thing with the garage. The garage is also individual pieces that you can build your own garage with. Uh, so if but not for that, I would have a hard time passing this in modularity. Because all the clutter, I mean, there's a lot of clutter, there's a lot of good clutter, but at the end of the day, the modularity, uh, the pieces that matter, you can get in some of their other asset packs, and, and I don't know, I, I just, if but not for this set of, of prefabs, I would say that it, that it did not pass that area. But because it, it does have these, I do think that, um, like, I do pass it, and I do think it's valuable because of that. So, uh, go upstairs, see even more level clutter. There's a number of different beds in, in this pack. Um, and then some more, some more toilet stuff. So let's, I'm going to do this real quick, uh, just show these couple of things. So obviously, like I pointed out, uh, All of these, these box trucks are interiors. Um, uh, what were the other things I was going to point out? Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Over in the church. Oh, over in the church. So here's where, like, they, this, <laughs> I don't know why they did it this way, but um, this top part of the collider essentially blocks you from walking through which is annoying, not going to lie. <laughs> um, so honestly, if I were going to use this in production, I would get rid of this piece altogether and just do this. Just, just do that. Du duplicate this guy out, drag him over, and call it a day. You know, <laughs> not mess around with that, that piece that I, I really... 
I do not understand why they why they did it that way. Um, but uh, oh, let's go back over here real quick. Um, oh, that's right. I was going to show this too. So I mentioned that all the buses, all the buses and stuff. So the doors are all. Like I said, individual pieces, you can animate those and just use this as a fully functional walk-on bus. Uh, same thing with this bus, same thing with pretty much all of the vehicles. They're, they're usable like that. But these houses, the ones that you can see don't have interiors from the outside, they're single-faced, right? So these are also single meshes. They're not, they're not modularized. So let's hop into the overview scene. This is the asset manifest scene and just go over everything um <clears throat> so let's start over, over here so a couple of different pool options indoor i'm sorry indoor above ground and uh uh below ground um some different mud uh trail uh options some different planner options uh this is interior i believe yeah it has an interior on it um and a door as you can see over there um so you've got the tree house, which is removable from the tree. Um, over here, this is what I was talking about with, like, these are very intelligently designed. They really, I feel like they put a lot of thought into making these work in a way that you can really build out a good, like, town map foundation um with you know streets and sidewalks and stuff uh and and um you have everything you need here like they they thought of all the pieces you could possibly need so though you just have to make sure for some of these you may have to reverse uh let's see how do we do that i think it's the z-axis you may have to revert no you may have to reverse it there's one of the values that that you have to reverse to like to negative. I don't remember on, on the rotation. I don't remember which one it is. But for some of them, you may have to do that. It's really not that big of a deal because it just works. Um, here are those uh, speed bump sort of accent pieces for the roads. Uh, we're gonna get to that last. So a lot of clutter. A lot of clutter. Um, Different rugs, different indoor uh, uh, power tools and and uh, pegboards and stuff like that. Grills, basketball hoops, just you know, park benches, <laughs> bathtubs, um, bench uh, desks, trash bins, which are also openable. Um, <clears throat> so, and then even more clutter. And it's a swing set. Yeah, it's a swing set trampoline, uh, a bunch of stuff over here and over there for inside of the shops, um, gas pumps, refrigerators, which are also, uh, you, the doors are all removable, um, showers, which uh, the doors are kind of removable. Um, <clears throat> same thing with this one. Doors are doors are kind of removable, but you may not. That's that's a little bit more questionable. You may just want to delete the glass altogether out of those propane tanks, outdoor uh, 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 ovens, um, the cabinets, the actual kitchen cabinets. Again, all all openable. All have interior facings. Um, same thing with these guys. Pretty much all of these, except for there's one or two cabinets somewhere over here that don't have interiors, uh, that, that the doors are removable. Um, so a couple of different um, um, uh, metal, uh, uh, metal shelving, uh, sofas, chairs, benches, like indoor benches, playground equipment. Again, more stuff for your shops. These are also, doors are also removable. Uh, sandbox, doghouse, more furniture. Like I said, a bunch before a bunch of beds, two, three, four, seven total. Laundry hanging stuff, um, pillows. So the pit, the individual pillows, in different colors. 
uh, washer and dryer, and even with this, there's that, and there's also dirty laundry inside of it that's removable. Um, range with with openable, you know, door, range hood, uh, more convenience store stuff, more convenience store stuff, baby stuff, more convenience store stuff, bunch of TV options. Um, this is one that does not open. So that's one. The safe, however, does. Uh, some building and industrial accents, uh, pool, pool stuff, a um, couple more rugs, a couple, a little bit more furniture, toilets with openable hoods, lids, whatever. Here are all your static buildings. I, I really, I, I think they could have left those out and just given us options with the materials, like the ex, like the roofing materials and the side materials to be able to build to just build our own so giving us the brown the brown roof material option here to just slap on there they could have gotten rid of these all together um, so this is where these are the three shops so there's a small one a big one and an l-shaped one i really really wish instead of doing these that they would have just spent more time focusing on making these modular give us give us the walls the ceilings the floors to be able to build these ourselves because i want to build my own stuff i'm a level designer i care more about that than i do having shit pre-built for me so that was i think a missed opportunity for for them um same thing with this the church is again one piece i would have liked to have seen these be modular pieces as well um, so i can build my own churches that's one thing i have yet to find in a low poly art pack that has churches in it all of them are static i i would have i really want to have my own option to build my own larger church but whatever without having to use a csg or boolean ops tool i should preface that i can do it myself but you know for these assets i'd really like to see someone jump on that so but this is really where i think a lot of the value comes in so you have all of your house pieces you have your house pillars you have your house walls floors ceilings staircases guardrails uh the garage stuff <laughs> um all the stuff you need to build your own houses you know free of the constraint of you know their their designs um and this is where i think the value for this set really comes into play uh there's you know turning staircases straight staircases um it's just it's they did a good job in my opinion of thinking about what you might need to build your own to build your own house um and uh and they did it so uh yeah that's that is the um low poly uh, uh town pack by Cintiq studios if you have this asset, let me know what you think of it in the comments. If you don't have it and there, if there are questions that I could possibly answer, let me know. Um, I'm also curious what everybody thinks about the current format that I'm doing. Um, I do have some other things. I know I've talked about this a lot, but when, when it comes to template assets and the carriage controller asset, um, I'm still... I'm still working through the best way to do that. What I think I'm going to do is just build a micro game, do like a 48 hour game jam and build a micro game and, you know, showcase them that way. But I still haven't fully decided yet. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about the format that I've been doing too. I, I'd love to get feedback. I'd love to hear what people are thinking, what they're liking, uh, like what they like about what I'm doing, what they don't like. And, um, I will see everyone in the next one, I guess. I guess that closes out. So I'll see everyone in the next one.